Unplugged. I'm Kate Law. I'm your host, and I am so, so very happy that you're here today because I can honestly say this show, this podcast, will be the most important one to date. So you don't want to go anywhere. So if you're just closing the door, heading off to a meeting, please come back, re-listen to this. It's going to be about how you can have a wise life. And by the end of the show, which is a mere 15, 20 minutes from now, some lives are going to be radically changed. And it's nothing that Kate's done. It's all power to him. And uh, my son reminded me the other day, he said, Mom, you know, they're still not going to get this he speak stuff. So I feel like I need to tell you, just in case you're new to he speaks with Kate, that this is a podcast about uh, stories and um, life experiences that I've had and how God has gotten me out of some tight spaces and through the word of God, through circumstances, nature, other people, uh, uh, speaking directly to my spirit. He's, um, he's just changed me and I, I can't hold back today. I really felt like I was supposed to just cut loose, uh, and, and just put it out there today. And so I'll be, uh, having some scriptures today. And so again, thank you for joining me. I want to thank Omar Duenas, my producer, and we're here at redskyrecordings.com in Santa Ana. I love being here and he makes me sound good. Today we're going to talk about, like I said, um, how to be wise. And we're going to talk about foundations. Um, and it's so weird is that over the summer, uh, I said to myself, I am going to walk around the block by eight o'clock and I'm going to do this every single day. And a girlfriend of mine, two houses away named Lily, she walks with me. And so we've been doing that for months now and we talk. And this is a neighbor who's been my neighbor for nine years and we didn't even know each other. Two houses away. Can you believe that? Anyway, we talk and we talk. She's having her house remodeled. She's having uh, two rooms added and a kitchen shifted around. And so we do, we laugh a lot. I mean, we just laugh. And uh, she tells me all the, what's going on. The, you know, they're putting down the foundation. And she said, you know, Kate, um, I guess we've got sandy, you know, uh, soil around our houses. And so they've got to dig deeper. And I said, that's interesting. Yeah. And then she goes, yeah. And then, and tomorrow three people are coming to sign off on, you know, the, I don't even know what they're called, but the, the footings or the, and, and I go, wow. She goes, yeah, three. Can you believe that? And then I said to her, I go, you know what? Well, that kind of makes sense now because like, can you imagine if like two signed off, but one didn't and, and, they poured the concrete and it was wrong. I mean, can you imagine how, first of all, how expensive they'd have to like jackhammer it and, and, and replace it time and expense. I mean, it's just astronomical, but what would be worse? I'm sure you've already thought about this. What if they, they didn't get signed off and they built and it's completely done and the foundation is faulty. We live in Southern California here. We've got earthquakes. And that would that could hurt somebody. And so I I was thinking about this in a spiritual realm. I was thinking, you know what? It it in my Bible reading this week, I was in I was in Matthew, and lo and behold, I come to 724 and it's the parable of the builders. And so I wanted uh, to read it to you. I'm going to be reading from the message version, Eugene Peterson, and he has a contemporary rendering of the Bible from the original language. And uh, so I really, really like it. Now, I uh, want to do a little footnote here. This is not the Bible that I do my main reading from. I do New King James. And then this is kind of icing on the cake for me because it's today's vernacular. It's kind of easier for me to digest because I'm not that bright. All right, so this is going to be um, Matthew 7, 24 to 27 from Eugene Peterson's A Message. This is a parable about the builders. These words, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. 
homeowner improvements to your standard of living, they're foundational words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, and a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible study, and then I put in parentheses, post on Facebook, don't work them out into your life. You're like a stupid carpenter who built his house on the sand. When a storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. Now, before I get into kind of a, what that means, I, I remembered I taught Sunday school for many years. I was my kid's Sunday school teacher. They hated it. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the second, third, and fourth graders. Um, anyway, I remember doing this lesson. And my son at the time uh, helped me. So he had a Lego house. So sure enough, I took, you know, 15 of these kids outside and we, we put the Lego house on a slab of rock and we had a bucket of water and, you know, we sang the song, of course, you know, the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Anyway, we pour, you know, the rains came down and the floods came up. We poured this bucket, you know, on the, um, on the house. And of course it, you know, it stood on the foundation, but the fun part was putting this Lego house on the sand. We just had like, kind of like a, we dug a ditch and you know, it was this really sandy soil there. And we put the house there, filled the bucket up, sang our little song. Of course, this was the fun part. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. Well, again, the rains came down and the floods came up. Well, then the house went kabam! <laughs> and of course, the kids just love that because the house fell down. Now, what, is, what does this mean to us? I love simplicity. It's like, okay, Kate, what did you teach the kids? Because so right now I'm kind of confused. The rock, is. The, it says in the word of God, is the foundation, the obedience to God's word. That's what it is. It's like the wise man is going to build his life on reading that word of God and not just reading it, doing it, not just putting it on Facebook quotes, doing it, living it out, forgiving people, not judging people. Trust me on this one. And then what are the, the, the floods and the rain? Well, those are the trials. And I don't know about you. I've been on this earth for almost 60 years. And I want to let you know something. Uh, I've gone through some trials. You've heard of some of them right here on this podcast. Some of them, uh, most of mine are self-inflicted. I'll let you know that right now. Some of them, that devil got me. And some of them, the Lord just said, you know, Kate, you've got some character defects and we're going to bring a couple storms into your life. And boy, howdy, we got some of those rough spots off. So basically, I wanted to tell you that, remember the Bible that I just read from Eugene Peterson? He died this week. Man, mind you, he was 85 years old. He had cancer. He had a full life, but he died. And my mother-in-law is dying in a nursing home right now. My last husband died instantly of a heart attack. You are not ever told when you're going to go. There's tragedies on the freeways. There's acts that children die. Elderly, you don't have time to say, well, you know, Kate, that's fine for you, but I want to kind of have some fun right now. I'm not ready for this. But I want to tell you something. There's someone today that is, I can tell. Why can I tell? Because I was, I didn't really want to do this show. And it's like, I'm supposed to. He spoke to me. So if your heart is pounding right now and you're saying, I'm getting a little uncomfortable under the collar and my heart is pounding and I'm sweating a little bit, you know, just consider that the Holy Spirit saying, you know something, it's time. You might even be a Christian. You might even be going to church, but you've kind of cooled your jets and you've kind of backslid a little bit. You know what I'm talking about. The Lord is so good. The hounds of heaven just knocking on your heart right now, just saying, you know, it's time. Pull over. Pull over the side of the road right now. Stop running. Stop doing those dishes. Sit down and just pray with me. Okay. 
okay, pray with me. Pray. It's a simple prayer. In fact, don't pray it yet. I'm going to tell you what the prayer is. And then if you agree with it, you say it as well. And I'm just going to say, dear God in heaven, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you that I happen to be at this place to hear this right now. And, and I'm done running. And I do believe that you sent your son to die on a cross for my sins. And today's the day that I say I'm done. You take the steering wheel. I know that your son died on a cross for my sins. Three days later, he raised from the dead. I'm asking you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior today. Holy Spirit, come and fill me from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. So that is the prayer. You can rewind this, hear that, say it out loud from your heart, with your lips, believing it. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the God's family. And there's a party going on in heaven because of it. I want to thank you so much. Thank you for for, uh, listening to He Speaks. Wow. Like I said, this is not something that I came up with. This is not something that I said I'm going to do. This is something that was handpicked for you today. And um, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Remember, slow down. If you did say that prayer, oh gosh, please let me know on hespeaks.com. Say, Kate, I prayed that prayer. Oh gosh, that would make my day. Uh, Tell another Christian, uh, find a Bible believing church. You know, before today's show, uh, we had a couple minutes and I, I got to ask Omar, my producer, I was very curious. I just asked him, you know, when, when did he receive Christ? And you got to listen to this. It's good. So, um, I was 19. I was 19. So I used, I played in the worship team and then I had been doing it for several years. Now this buddy of mine, he'd like to write songs and I was starting to write songs myself. And it was, it was interesting. We had a conversation and, um, we knew each other. So because we knew each other, he knew me like, Hey dude, like I know what you're doing after church when we get out of here. Um, and you're writing songs. So, you know, and I think at that moment he had also come to the place where like, look, if we're writing songs and we're writing songs that are biblically based like we're not really living the way we're supposed to i mean and again i'm 19 i'm not doing crazy uh partying or anything but you know there's stuff that i was doing so you know he's like hey man like you really got to think about what you're going to be doing and why you're going to be doing it and how and how god is going to use that and you have to understand, he hit it. He he hit the mark because I at that moment I was like, okay, he's right. If I'm gonna write songs or be part of a band that's Christian, the like like I, I almost felt like people were gonna find out eventually that I was not being Christian, right? I was pretending. So you know, a couple of months passed and, um. It it was surreal. So, again, you got to understand, I'm in church since age 12, and it's normal. And then I'm 19, and I have, like, a realization of, like, okay, God, like, he's right. Um, I can't write Christian songs if I'm going to pretend to be Christian, you know. And it wasn't like this magnificent while worship or during a service I raised my hand. It was just kind of like... As time went by, I kind of realized, all right, God, like, you know, I, I really do accept you, you know, as my savior, and I, I accept this gift you've given me because it's obviously a gift, and I just give it to you, and I and I want you to use me. Basically, it was more of that type of prayer, and um, you know, after that, I just kind of started to move forward, you know, and and certain things in life. You know, when you ask God to do something, certain things, he does certain things in your life to guide you the way you're supposed to go. You know, after that, I had uh, a lot of bands, not a lot, but maybe four or five, six bands say, hey, we want to work with you. Um, 
I had a a musician from Colombia come. He had a tour and he he appreciated my talent and he took me on his tour. You know, and then I grew through him because uh, he was a songwriter. Um, I met my wife, you know, uh, and then I sort of, what I did start to understand is, thanks to my dad, was uh, how to be a man. And not only that, a man of God. Because at that point, it was like, okay, dude, um, you can go a different route and just forget about everything that God's given you. Because I've always felt like it's been clear. And it's been very clear that God has favored me. And I can't deny that. And if I do something, sin, or fall, or whatever, it, it just gives, it gives a bad testimony. And then a lot of what I feel is guilt towards, like, God, you've been really good to me. And, and if I mess all this up, then, but it, it's just, it's not, it's not worth it. Like, because it's so clear to me. You know, and I've told you about the studio. That's one aspect of where God's like, dude, I'm on your side. You just have to follow me. Um, you know, me to my wife and my kids. And the life that I live is pretty darn good. But but it, because it's it's based on, you know, following God's will. So, you know, and I'm very careful of it. You know, just you have to be very careful if you're not. So. That was the way I came to Christ. So, kind of looking back towards that, it's just like, yeah, because right after that, God's like, all right, dude, let's go. Like that? Hold on, I'm still right. And then on another episode, we are going to ask Omar how to be a man, because there's a lot of men that need to hear that. And we'll see you next week. God bless.